السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We continue inshallah ta'ala with the fiqh of the heart and um, we're still talking about at-tawbah, repentance the most important act of worship ubudiyah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in general after the Tawheed and what uh, constitutes and what comes as a result of the Tawheed. When we say the Tawheed, we're talking about matters of belief and also acts of worship. As-Salah, which is the second pillar of Islam, is part of the Tawheed, is part of Al-Iman. So when we say the most important act of Ubudiyah and servitude and worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after the Tawheed is the Tawbah, is the repentance, is from that perspective. Meaning that the Tawheed is not just the belief, it's the belief in actions. What comes after that, as in a level of importance, of course, is a Tawbah repentance. Why? Because no human being can perfect his actions or become sinless after the Prophet ﷺ. So human beings, meaning that um, the human beings, that means they are sinners. This is, it's, it's by default. And that's what the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, every son of Adam is khatta, is a sinner. The best of the sinners are those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the only way to perfect oneself is not to be sinless, but rather is to be always in state of repentance at all times, under any condition, in whatever situation that a person is in. And that's why if there is a moment in one's life or a day or whatever situation that a person is in and he's not completely in state of repentance from all sins, that means that person is volume, he's a wrongdoer, he is in, on great danger if he dies in that state. Whoever does not repent, he is from the volimun, he is from the wrongdoers as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. The last thing that we talked about in, uh, before Ramadan about the, uh, some of the things that Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah talked about tawbah with the, the hidden or subtle things in matters and the subject of tawbah that many people are not aware of uh, and some of the things to be witnessed. And the last thing we mentioned that we'll talk about the humbleness that uh, a person would uh, have in his heart as a result of the sin that would make him repent to Allah. The sin causes the person to be in state of humiliation. No matter how much a person is arrogant or, um, or um, stubborn or whatever there is, there is a level of, uh, of humiliation there is for the sinners. And for the believers, they feel that more than anyone else that would make them repent to Allah. And humiliation is a bad thing. To be humiliated by another human being is not a good thing. It's not a pleasant thing. It's not a virtue. Except if this humiliation is between the slave, between the human being, and his creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is when we call it humbleness. You can call it even humiliation, but in a good sense. And I guess the word in Arabic is dhul. And a dhul is to be humbled, is to be is something that is the total opposite of, of arrogance. Uh, and the المذلل, the path when it's مذلل, that means the path has been made straight and easy and good for people to walk on. Right? There's no bumps in it. It's not uh, uphill. It's something that is made easy for people to step on. So when a person has that ذل or humbleness in his heart, that means he is a abd. He is a servant of Allah. He's a creation of Allah. He turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. He submits himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you have that dhul, you don't think uh, what's best for you. Uh, you leave it to your creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one that knows what's best for us. You submit yourself fully. And the more the person perfect his submission to Allah, the more that he humble himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're talking about the creator of the heavens and the earth. And really it's such a... Uh, a sad reality to many of the human beings on the face of earth and so much uh, arrogance even if people look like they're humble towards one another 
but they're so arrogant towards their creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they, there's no uh, reason for that whatsoever. They are creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how can they be arrogant towards their creator? And uh, the clear sign of that is you find the human beings, many of them, they think that they know what is best for them. They disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They live a life of ignorance when it comes to the obedience of their creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't worship him alone or they associate partners with him or they commit sin. So levels of arrogance that is different from one to the other, all of which is because of this lack of dhul or humbleness or humiliation uh, or good humiliation, of course, because as again, as human beings, we cannot even, we do not even own the air that we breathe. We do not even own ourselves. You don't even have any control over your own cells of your body. So how can a person be in that state and he knows where he, how he was created from a daily drop and what's the end of this life and everybody will die and they return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and in between all of that, how can a person doesn't humble himself to the creator of the heavens and the earth? So uh, to establish this level of dhul al and this is one of the pillars of ibadah, by the way. And we can look at the ibadah or the ubudiyah in many different aspects, one of which it, it has two pillars to it. That you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with perfect love and perfect humbleness and submission. Otherwise, there's no ubudiyah. There's no servitude to Allah unless you have the perfect love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's one of the levels of humbleness even. And the perfect submission and humbleness to the creator of the heavens and the earth. So whoever claims that they love Allah, but they don't humble themselves and uh, submit themselves to the commands of Allah, they're not really having that love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a fake one. It's not a truthful one. And this is basically does not make them, uh, uh, you know, um, true servants of Allah. And on the other hand, if someone claims that he submit himself to the creator of the heavens and the earth, but without having the perfect love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the same evil. It does not do the person any benefit unless both are there. The perfect love and perfect submission to Allah. So Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says that uh, the dhul or this humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ibadah is of four, four levels. Four levels. The first one, I hope, inshallah, that you write this down and take notes of it, inshallah. The first level of humbleness is, he says that it's mushtarakatun bayna al-khalq. It's common among all of the creation of Allah. That means everybody has it by default, whether they are willing to have it or not. It's, it's already there in them, which is ذُلُّ الْحَاجَةِ وَالْفَقْرِ إِلَى اللَّهِ The humbleness or the humility of need, <coughs> of need, and being in need of Allah. Everybody is fuqara. Everybody is faqir to Allah. Faqir is a word used for those who are poor because they are in need of others. Who is not in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Every single human being is in need. And when they call faqir, someone poor is in need of another human being. And how about the rich? He's in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> He's in need even of other human beings. So every single human being they are in, 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 in uh, an extreme need. With every breath they take, they are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of the people of the heavens and all of the creation of Allah in the heavens and in the earth, they are all in need of Allah. They are fuqara ila Allah. Ya ayuhal nasu antumul fuqara ila Allah. O mankind, you are fuqara, you are in need of Allah. And, you, uh, and he is al-ghani al-hamid. He is the most rich subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and he's the only one. So the only one that is in need of no one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are in need of Allah. So this is by default, by the fact of being creation, that just saying there's a creation, that means by necessity, it right, does not need too much convincing, right? It's something that is by necessity. And as we talked about this, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's important to know what is by necessity for, for a person to know, for a human being to know. There are things that, that is to be known by necessity. Otherwise, a person is arrogant or he's crazy or something else. And one of which is the existence of the creator of the heavens and the earth. This is by necessity. This is, uh, I mean, you know, this is, 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 is a must for someone to even to, to start to even say anything. 
So the same thing by necessity, that human beings are in need of Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that is in no need of anyone. لا يسأل عما يفعل وما يسألون Therefore, no one is to question Allah about his actions. And everything else other than Allah, they can be questioned. So you, you can question uh, a human being's actions, but you cannot question the actions of Allah. Whether it's the religion of Allah, that the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or whether this is the universal decree of Allah. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed in the Quran and in the Sunnah, the Prophet والسلام, something, this is halal, this is haram, hijab, forbidding riba, whatever, there is major things, minor things. But nobody is to question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the creator of the heavens and earth is the one that legislated that for the people, commanded that for the people, even if it's against their own opi- opinions and desires and likings and so on. And also the when it comes to the decree of Allah, the qadr of Allah, someone is afflicted by a calamity. Nobody is to question the actions of Allah because he's the most wise. He's the creator of the heavens and earth. And he is in no need of anyone. Therefore, people just need to maybe know the wisdom behind it, sure. They need to be servants of Allah. They need to oppose or uh, face these trials and difficulties with patience, with seeking rewards from Allah, and so on. So the first level of humbleness or dhul, something that is all human beings, uh, they have this, which is the fact that they are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second level, which is a special one to the believers, which is the humbleness of obedience. The, uh, the, this beautiful humbleness of obedience and ubudiya servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is, as he called it, الاختيار, to have this humbleness of, of, of having the ability to choose to be obedient to Allah and to be a servant of Allah and to be uh, an obedient slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the essence and uh, the secret of Ubudiyah, the secret of servitude and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Uh, if a human being is, is, is having that obedience to another human being, like slaves, for example, this is not a good feeling. This is humiliation. This is bad. It's not a pleasant one. But the dhul and humbleness of the obedience to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the most beautiful thing on the face of earth. To have that full submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to willingly submit yourself to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And you see that as a Muslim. It's not just, not just about the salah that you make or the zakah that you give or so. It's, it's the fact that when uh, the time for salatul fajr or salatul dhuhr or any salah starts, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the believers to have a mu'adhin to say hayya ala salah, hayya al falah, or to even from the beginning to say Allahu Akbar, you willingly submit yourself to that obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You did not choose the time for fajr in the summertime or in the winter time. If it's left to the human beings, they'll do what they do when they go to work, even if they're obedient to Allah, seven o'clock in the morning, maybe eight o'clock, whenever is convenient for them. Right, but for the, the slaves of Allah, those who have the second level of humbleness, they see that this is a, a command from Allah. He's the one, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that commanded them to pray that specific prayer in that specific time. So they have nothing but to fully submit themselves with this uh, humbleness to the creator of the heavens and the earth. The same thing. Anything that is obligation, anything that is haram, anything that is recommended. And then uh, for them to achieve it, they seek help from Allah. And they are sincerely seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they're able to humble themselves and submit themselves. Uh, so that we don't take too much time. This is the second level. And by the way, each one needs lots of contemplation and reflection and looking into the evidences in the Quran and the Sunnah that. Uh, brings these meanings into the heart. The third one is the humbleness of al-mahabba, dhullu al-mahabba, uh, the love, the humbleness of love. Uh, and when someone loves, if a human being loves a human being, right, there's a level of humiliation present there. right, And, and, and this humiliation 
right, is, is part of the love that people have towards one another. And actually, the love itself, al-mahabba, is established on the foundation of humility and humbleness. You know, you mentioned a line of poetry there, right? اخضع وذل لمن تحب فليس في حكم الهوى أنف يشال ويعقد which means humble yourself, humiliate yourself to the one that you love because in the, in the ruling of love, there's no such a thing as anaf. There's no such a thing as arrogance or <clears throat> that you would uh, have pride or so. When, when, when a person truly loves someone, they humble themselves to them. And that's, you know, of course, you know, for the, in the lives of the human beings. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if people truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they humble themselves to the creator of the heavens and the earth. So this is dhullul mahabba or the humbleness of the love of Allah. The, th- the fourth level is dhullul ma'asiyati wal jinay. The humbleness or the humiliation of the sin. That if you are a believer and you don't feel that humiliation in your heart when you commit a sin, that means there is a disease in the heart. And if you feel after the sin or even during the sin that you have that feel of humiliation, that means the heart is still alive. And that would, if, uh, nobody likes to be humiliated, right? So they want to always repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, and even if you remember the sin after repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do you feel in your heart? You feel that humbleness. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you say that you are a sinner. That means you deserve to be punished. You deserve to be uh, among the people of the Hawfayr. But it's the mercy of Allah that you seek. The forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this humbleness of sin and, 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 and this obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, we have always the, the two uh, ways of looking into things to look at the mercy of Allah and to look at the punishment of Allah, to have the fear of Allah, the hope for the rewards from Allah. Someone that committed so much sins and he wants to re- repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sure, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver, the most merciful. And he would look into this and he would see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave, forgave Adam alayhi salam, forgave, you know, uh, whoever turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver. Right? So uh, what... Uh, brings this in the heart is this humbleness as a result of this. So these are four levels of humbleness that if they're all present in the heart of a person, that means his dhul or humiliation or humbleness is perfect. And his submission is perfect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is submitting himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with fear and hope, with love, with, with obedience, with being in need. So always um, to work on one, one's heart, to strengthen our hearts with always reflecting over this. Throughout the day, you see how uh, you are in state of humbleness to the fact that you are in need of Allah. Just the fact that when you're sitting now, you're breathing, subhanAllah. What if you're not able to breathe? And that's what people, when they die, they're not able to breathe, right? So uh, the one that gave us that ability to breathe, that along all of the different things in our life, right? The, the things that happens in our life and on a daily basis, on in every second of our life, the fact that you're able to sit without falling, to stand and to walk without falling, the fact that you're able to eat and drink and to have relationships and to think and to intellect and so on. This is uh, brings all kinds of humbleness in the hearts that we are in need of Allah. So constantly, Reflecting and making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to this. Constantly reflecting over the humbleness to be obedient to Allah. Time for the salah, you, you practice that at least five times a day. You know, this humbleness of uh, leaving everything for the worship of Allah. And truly leaving everything. And the more you perfect leaving everything for the worship of Allah, the more that you perfect the level of humbleness and, and, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not just leaving physical uh, things to, to make salah, but also leaving the things that our hearts are attached to. Right? You leave your, your job, you leave your work, you leave your studying, you leave whatever means of dunya that you're doing. Right? You leave that physically and you leave it with your heart too. 
when you go to the masjid, when you pray at home, if you're a, a woman, for example, right? You, you, you leave everything, you take everything out of your heart and you fill your heart with the worship of Allah. And this is, it's not easy, of course, especially in the middle of the day and things like this, but that needs, it requires for a person to train himself. That's why the wudu and then the salat sunnah, walking to the masjid, uh, making our place of worship uh, to the best of our ability, uh, away from all kinds of distractions and reflecting over every word we say. So this is on a daily basis too. You have that act of worship of humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same thing with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because every action, uh, the, what initiates it is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fact that you made that he subhanahu wa ta'ala created love in you to love this and to love that, it's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to remember the sin in a healthy way, because we don't want to be in disparity from the mercy of Allah. So that it, we keep our repentance in place so that we don't fall into arrogance or things like this, but to constantly uh, you know, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the, the real humbleness. And this is the real... Uh, uh, pillar of our day that we need to be upon. So we'll stop here, inshallah ta'ala, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to perfect our repentance and to make us steadfast upon the deen of Allah. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, barakallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam alaykum wa rahmatullah.